Up in the sky is where I was born in a raid with animals in the sea. I am one of the baboons in the jungle. I was born in a different my eyes. Don't see the same. I imagine things on my own way. I can feel the rhythm. I can feel the clouds moving mountains to mountains like music in my ears. I can feel the sense of your heart beating the drums. Ubuntu Ngabantu. Ubuntu Ngabantu. I am a poetry. A poetry that speaks the mind of an evil forest. A poetry that individuals who have spent two weeks together um, and a particular process has happened for us that some people have called social fermentation and we feel that it's a little bit like the process of making amakheu. Can you please tell everybody what is amakheu? It's a traditional very popular drink among closer speaking people mm -hmm. but that drink requires ingredients one two it requires a process of fermentation mm. and that's been an interesting process that has involved different people who've come together as the ingredients and they've shared a particular process mm -hmm. so when you make amakheu the first thing you have to do is to assemble the ingredients true story decide what you need to make this the special African drink. So I think it's also very important the quality of the ingredients and um, the diversity in the ingredients. Beautiful individual different coloured pieces of corn from all over the country instead of one genetic strain of white <laughs> seed that all looks the same and I think that's what's made our amakewu so delicious. I am a connector. I move between spaces and find people with similar interests and then move on to the next space. And, and somehow that just creates these networks that links up different people in different places. And that's kind of what happened here. We all just put out the word and different people were attracted to the call because they knew this was the dish that they wanted to be a part of. The process of us being mixed together as ingredients to make a macheu. How's that been for you? I'm seeing it differently from a different perspective that I normally would see it. Because it's normally usually my age group mm -hmm. or just like a, a group that was younger than me. But it, now it's like a mix between my age group and my dad's generation. Mm -hmm. Quite a shift to come into now. It's a whole group of us and we're in this thing together and we're all, we're bringing our experiences, our, um, our different life paths. The first ingredient that you start with is something from the past. Mm -hmm. For some people, that's what's called a starter culture. It's been important for me to realize that this group of people didn't just come together on this occasion but that there are a number of people in this group who have been together at a previous workshop where a certain amount of fermentation took place where a beautiful brew was brewed and that we can carry a little bit of that forward as a starter culture. In our first session working together we drew a big clock and we spoke about how this clock is really a representation of the colonial understanding of time as being linear. You know, one thing happens and then it's over and then another thing happens and, and time moves in a straight arrow. And once something has happened, it's over. Um, but then we started talking about other ways of understanding time and how time is layered and how the hauntings of the past are still with us, but that the present has some evolutionary potential to change the past and influence the future and the potential that we have. We've all brought the past with us into these spaces and that's often been really difficult. 1963, I'm a nine-year-old. There's this huge painful event that takes place, forced removal. I remember 
huge trucks, bulldozers. They are still stuck in my mind. People loading their furniture in these huge trucks. And we were removed from District 6, separated from everyone else that I grew up with. We were dumped in Kuguleto. I was also came through the struggle. I was also quite intimately involved. And I always felt that I had kind of blood on my hands in some ways, even though I didn't do anything. The past is here in the present too. It's not just the future. It's not, it's not so much about how do we bring the future into the present, but it's also about how do we actually deal with this past. I can say my past, it built me a lot. I grew up with a big family, and then I was like, I was have a grandfather and grandmother, she loved me a lot. And then they keep on telling me about the beauty of nature, how to grow your own food. So for me, it was a good thing, which means I can call it in Kosa, which means I can't be a human being alone without other people. The urban-rural divide is a big divide in our country. You have become those that have been damaged by the, that separate development approach that the old system had, you know, that, yeah, you belong there, mm -hmm. they belong there. That's one history in our country that's not going to be easily uh, wiped out. It's only by accessing that little bit of the past and bringing it into the future and giving it the potential and the other ingredients that we can grow something new. Mm. Remembering that history, acknowledging it, if it's painful, if it's traumatizing, if it's guilt, if it's joy, all, all parts of it need to be acknowledged and reclaimed. Realizing that not only acknowledging our own histories, but acknowledging the collective history. When you're mixing the water and the mealy meal together, you, mm. your goal is to create a good mix. You don't want bits of the mealy meal sitting separate from, from the water. You're really wanting to, to get a good mix going. And, and that ego part of us doesn't like to get mixed up with everybody else. We want to hold on, you know, I want to stay as a grain of mealy meal. I don't want to get mixed up into a mixture in which I'm going to be unrecognizable. Going with the flow, I've lost my individual identity, but now I'm part of a whole, but I don't know wh where's it going to go. What are we going to create? What's the end product? This week for me has felt very unpredictable. It's been a very collaborative process. It's been a slow process. Being sent out to f make up cartoons and film them you know, that's not normally how I operate. I operate with a much kind of clearer agenda of let's get the job done. Learning to go with a process that doesn't really know where it's going, mm. but it's a whole lot more fun than following a, a well laid out plan. A well, key element for me has been, for this week, reconnecting with, um, with play. And so we weren't going out to, on assignment. We were going out to play games. And we've had such fun um, filming different images, powerful images, but also beautiful images, unexpected images, fun images, intriguing images. Unlocking the creative in us, which is so suppressed. It's about finding the artist that is in all of us and bringing that out and creating something together. How do we work at, at collectively creating this, this journey, this, this artwork, um, in a way that lets go of our ideas of what it should look like or whose story is more important. So that's, it's a fascinating experiment. The sky must rise! Learning differently. I learn by doing, I learn by observing, you know. So for me, it's a lifelong thing, mm. learning. Mm. That kind of brewing that was happening, yeah. 
Like everybody has their hands in. Everybody takes on that role of the director or the manager at some point. So we're all, you know, learning by experience. We're all experiencing those challenges. So what we're getting out of it a lot easier to digest because we're all seeing it from different perspectives, but we're all pouring back into it at the same time. So it just really seems like the perfect space for learning and growing and sharing. And then we have some boiling water added to us and we cook. So things do get a bit hot. That's a part of the process that's often turned down. I think we have a, a tendency to weaponize positivity, to say, no, no, you're being negative. Let's be positive, let's be happy, let's be nice. It felt really uncomfortable. I think there were a few occasions speaking about race, speaking about apartheid, speaking about masculinity, um, where things became really uncomfortable. My grandfather used to tell me, you must look after your words when you say things in public. Things need to get uncomfortable and ugly. Things need to hurt and we need to rub up against each other in this process of making this concoction. After having cooked amacheu, you have to stop, put the pot there, leave it until it's cold. Actually, you sometimes just need to sit and let people talk and let people share and listen. It requires time to just, after having cooked it, you have to put it somewhere. So it seems that this amacheu that we've been cooking together this week is is something that you do enjoy. It takes time. It's not like the amacheu that you buy in the carton. I don't rush things. I have passion to do things. So even this week, these two weeks for me, it's just a, it's like two days. Once you allow it to digest, you can take from it what you need to. Giving some space to allow all the stuff we've been talking about processing to actually digest it helps us to kind of make sense of what feels like chaos and one of the the things that that seems to be coming through is that the most important thing is for us to slow down and do nothing and not know what to do We came up with so many different ideas. We put them in the pot. Now we're beginning now to remove some of these things. I think a lot of us have felt completely overwhelmed when we look at all the amazing, brilliant ideas we've all put into this massive pile on the floor. And, and it's the, the muchness of it that's so overwhelming. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot going on here, but the fact that we're all sharing that workload, I think that it makes it a little bit easier for us to get through. Sieving is very important. It's an important process. Because by doing so, we are refining this drink. We are making this drink drinkable. That process of distillation is so important for, for us to be able to, to make any sense of the information. A large part of the work is actually just refining it and taking out the bits that don't need to be there, like really distilling something to its essence. But this, this metaphor of the fermentation is such a deep message of trust the process, allow it to happen, allow it to bubble. What's come out of this workshop is really about space. You know, we talk about this space. So it's this space that is open without an agenda. And for a group similar or diverse or whatever that can connect with that space and develop something collectively. It's been very, very good 
to connect with people who originally come from the Eastern Cape and witness how they've rooted themselves here in Cape Town. And this has been an inhos inhospitable place to them. And yet they remain determined. I've decided that the small spaces that I've got, or my small space at home, you know, I'm going to prove myself there. I'm going to change that space. And I've got power to change that space. What you're doing is more about using land creatively and using land not just to produce vegetables, which can either be eaten or, or sold, but it seems like you're doing something much more than that. I've realized there are the schools, there are deserts. I want to leave a legacy, you know, so I'm going to use it. The way you're working challenges us to think beyond the limitations of owning land. Something that was very powerful for me in visiting Ezra and Viani's gardens yesterday was that that is what they're creating. Like those garden spaces, we all felt it very physically. Like when you walked through the school grounds, it was chaos and busy and madness. And then you just walk through this gate into this most amazing paradise of a space. And it's just quiet and still and nurturing and beautiful and nourishing. And these spaces that, that are being created, these gardens, are actually what is enabling us to create new stories. Truly inspired by the work of Ezra and Vuyani, that it can be done. Even in the deserts, it, we can create these beautiful spaces. And it feels very unjust that some of the people who are working hardest to look after this place are those who are continually marginalized and not given support. If you think about all the money that goes into keeping Kirstenbosch beautiful and the suburbs beautiful, where's that level of support for the spaces that we saw? I actually, I also found Cape Town and do find Cape Town very challenging. And I'm from the Eastern Cape and I feel far more at home in the Eastern Cape. I'm actually here because it's difficult to be here but for the reasons you're describing. So <laughs> We've experienced a little bit this week of how it feels to, to live on the other side of the railway line and to struggle for support and to struggle to access land and to struggle to beautify spaces and, and create spaces of healing. The elders tells us that a visitor is very important. And when a visitor comes to your homestead, you have to offer that visitor something. And Amakheuge is used for that kind of uh, offering. We come to the part of the ceremony where we are going to drink or eat, and we're going to eat and drink communally as a way of crossing boundaries and borders, enabling conversations. Remember this is a drink mm -hmm. that you are going to be serving to your family, those who are on their journey, coming from somewhere, going somewhere. I certainly feel very full and particularly happy because my favorite meal happens to be deep connection. So mm -hmm. that is what truly nourishes me in life. So we don't know how to be change makers on our own <laughs> because I don't know if we, we can be a change maker on our own in isolation, in a vacuum. We have to do it together. And perhaps that is the true power of PV in the sense because it's putting you in that place where you, you are on that stage or on that platform where you are speaking. You're being held accountable. So what you say is there mm. for all to see. Mm. The participatory video process is not so much so about having an end product, but really what's happening throughout the workshops, which is like the conversations that we're having, the relationships that we're building, the insights that are being gained. 
the things that we're all experiencing here, these are things that we should take with us out into the world. Just like processing things, going through challenges, learning to have acceptance, being patient. It's been a unique process, this one here, because it's, it's been really at a deep level in such a short time. So I guess our process has been creating a taste of South Africa, of Cape Town, of us being here in Musenberg, and of us also acknowledging that there's a railway line that runs through us, through the group. Yes, we are Musenberg, but we are also Guguletu on the other side of, of the railway line. This process has been amazing. I've learned a lot, and it's it's something that I can take with me. And that's why we need these bridges across the railway lines, across the country, from the urban to rural, from the haves to have-nots. Like, we need more bridges, and we need to cross those bridges. Like, we've been far too comfortable for far too long. In course, I will say now, our story is in Uvu Tondaba. When we talk about Uvu Tondaba, we talk about it's whereby things getting there now. It's whereby we see the action, it's whereby we see the truth, it's whereby we see the, the lies. So it's time now to, we need to enjoy, we need to tell which is which, which is not. No matter what, it's not time to looking back. We're making a machil. Thank you. What I've taken from this, I've taken um, the understanding of what we as a society are going through individually and as a collective, and more or less um, looking at the metaphor of the actual machil being made and um, aligning that to what we currently are going through, it's, 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 it's bizarrely beautiful. And um, I like the fact that um, each individual is sort of like changing the narrative of what the past used to be and where we're at now, and maybe looking forward into what the future may hold. Yes. So pretty much, mm -hmm. and not just with Abandu Abalapa. It's but then you know, the mere fact that we are all here and we all won, it means that it's already starting. I'm a landless farmer from Puleni. So, um, I, I will try to be as short as I am. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot that stood out. Um, the two hectares, one family. I'm saying two hectares, one. I need the two hectares. I'm a landless farm. Yes. You know, one of the things that stood out for me most was the corn, the colorful mbona that was held there, and the color of the machine. Mm. I grew up with yellow maize meal, ne? without giving away my age. <laughs> but I, I grew up with yellow maize meal, but today I am cooking with white maize meal. There's an advert on TV that says white something is the clever choice. Mm -hmm. And now I am thinking, where would you get white corn? And what process did that corn have to go through to mm -hmm. be that white? And yet I am saying it's the clever choice. So how is it a clever choice? Um, I, I'm watching the video, and uh, what I see on the video is like people have a common goal. 
Mm. People are working together towards something. Yes. I see a people putting like effort, all of them, right? yes. together. And I've been seeing, I've been hearing over and over the um, people. Yeah, they are working together, and at the end, at the end, they've got this same <coughs> product yes. that is uh, involving everyone. Yes. So, which simply means that now they are breaking that barrier mm -hmm. between the people over the railway line. You understand? Yes. People that was taking this thing for granted mm -hmm. would also be curious. What is this? Mm -hmm. Let me taste it. Mm -hmm.